waiting on notification. Okay. Okay, here we go. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast. We have an amazing guest with us this afternoon. Uh, one who I'm very humble would take time out of your busy schedule to uh, come talk with myself, Joshua Muhammad, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast. And that is Brother Jalil Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine, sir. Uh, now, Brother Jalil, many of us um, know you from your work with drill and, you know, drilling and holding the flags on the color guard and things of that nature. But you grew up in the nation under some um, amazing parents. Let's start there. Uh, who are your parents, sir? Yes, sir. Um, my parents are first of my mom, um, Sister Lenora Muhammad, uh, top flight MGT, wonderful mother. And for many years, she served in a capacity of uh, protocol, not officially, but officially. So, but before any of that was happening at the mosque, it was happening at home. And so um, my mom, sister Lenore, they, uh, and then my father, brother um, Daoud, many know as student minister, Daoud Muhammad, who served in the ministry um, over Mosque number one for uh, 14 years here in Detroit. And they came in the nation after hearing the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak at Lincoln University in 1981. Um, mm -hmm. They were in college. And interesting, we, what I mentioned to you, we uh, celebrated my father's 60th uh, birth anniversary, birthday, Earth Day, whatever y'all want to call it. Birthday, <laughs> you know, birthday, birthday. <laughs> the, um, we surprised him with um, his high school mentor slash music teacher slash we call him, you know, spirit guy because he was the one who introduced my father to the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the album of the Farrakhan. Yes, and he he um, he actually helped my father get through high school because he had to um, repeat his senior year because he mm -hmm. was you know just doing what he was doing as a black man in high school and yes, he he said you know he called him out you know, and he was able to speak to him and not at him, but he was also the music teacher mentor. And when he took them to school on the way, um, driving to Lincoln University, uh, which is in Jefferson, Jefferson City, Missouri, um, you know, my father said, you know, don't you got some like some jazz or something you can play? <laughs> he said, I, yeah, I got yeah. some jazz fire kind. He said he made them <laughs> listen to the minister the whole trip up. <laughs> so, and so that was prior to the minister coming to Lincoln University in 1981, where they got to hear him for the first time. And they joined shortly thereafter, July, I believe, later that year. Beautiful, beautiful. And I want to thank you for your sacrifice and, of course, the sacrifice of your family, your parents, and all of your siblings. How many of you all is it? We are, uh, from my parents, uh, from Brother Daoud and Sister Lenore, it's nine. Mm. Uh, and we have an uh, eldest sister, and she's included. And so we have our, our affectionately group, affectionately known as M10. And so the Muhammad mm. 10, that's, that's our core. And of course, um, now, uh, because my father is re remarried now, we have an additional uh, siblings, and they just come into the fold. But that's that's our core. The those that nine, you know, we grew up in this thing in the trenches of yes, sir, yes, sir, of, yes, of what it means to be a child of a labor <laughs> in the nation of Islam. And of course, that has many different meanings for many different people. But we know um, 
from a from a, a different side, you know, of having to see our parents go off to duty and come back um, to still be mom and dad <laughs> all the all the same. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. speaking of that, many many children of laborers don't um, often choose to follow in their parents' footsteps or you know do the same thing. It seems as if you have chosen to be in the ministry, to drill, to, you know, do so much work in the community and especially with helping the younger people. Uh, what was it about what you saw in your parents that made you want to follow in those footsteps? Um, I was, it was a, uh, I think many different things, but I think it was at the point of when they, uh, separated mm. is when the decision i made the decision that this is what i wanted it's interesting mm. that that was the reality but mm. that was probably my lowest point in my islam when mm. I, I i moved i moved out i was i was at, the, at one point i was house sitting for one of the brothers it became my living situation mm. and at that, I was, you know, trying to stay in the mosque, and I was, you know, I was still going to class, going out soldier. I, we, you know, I, went, I didn't really had no money. I wasn't working at the time, and at that time, I was struggling with understanding the reality of Master Fat Mahab. This was probably two thousand five, two thousand six, um, early part latter 2005 early 2006 i was you know i was struggling you know i because i'm like you know how how, how do we because after a certain point you come to a, a a where you have to make this decision like this is the life that you want to live but it can't be based off of your father's belief or your mother's belief you have Absolutely. to believe it for yourself yes sir. so i'm like you know i struggle i struggle and I mean, you're talking about nights where I just sit up and like, you know, how I'm gonna make this work? Crying, bro. Like literally, <laughs> like just, I didn't want to go back home yet because I just it wasn't it wasn't a fit for me at the time, and I just was like, I need to do this. I got to do this for myself. So I um, and where I was staying, it was a few other FOI staying there as well. I I started in there, and then you had a few other brothers move in, and so just the different dynamics of uh, me being the youngest that was there, <laughs> you know, all of these other older brothers with they set ideas of what they thought life was supposed to be. <laughs> and me, you know, listening mm -hmm. to them like, yeah, you know, I hear you, but that don't sound right, but okay. Um, <laughs> and um, I would, you know, of course, I, we listened to the, the minister's lectures. Of course, we love him. We loved, we grew up, we grew up loving um, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, loving the honorable Mr. Lafar Khan, loving Master Far Muhammad, but not really truly understanding that reality. And so mm. it took me to get to that point of, I, I was at that point and I watched, um, it was a, one of the brothers, I'll never forget this brother. He, um, I don't know where he is now, but his name was Brother Patrick. And we would stay up late night studying. And if he if he came, he worked at the hospital, so he would come uh, home late. And if he saw me still up, he was like, well, brother, you might as well come up here um, and study. So we would we would play the game. He had Xbox and we would play Dynasty Warriors. And you yeah. know, they have a lot of history in the game. And so he would like, you know, running down the, the history of all of these Chinese empires and, and you would get that get that history. And then after we were done, we would break the books. He like, you know, and so I had reached the point where I was, he was like, well, you need to listen to this. Or I heard it somewhere I was listening to it. It was Fear, Faith, and Truth, that lecture. Fear, Faith, and Truth. And in that lecture, the minister That's talked true. about his experience of coming in, into contact with that bull when he was on his fast and taking yeah, it yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> and of sir. course, it's greater depth given to that on that um, one of the episodes of uh, the 40 Miles series in the NFA. And yes, sir. so I listened to that. And at the end, 
of that lecture, the minister said, he went through and he's, he's talking about the God. And he said, go home and just, just try him. You know, just try him. And I said, all right, all right, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out because you know, you never have the, the, the full application for your own self. So and let me try this out. So the next day we went out. Before I went out, I, you know, I prayed, you know, Allah, person of Master Father Muhammad, help me be successful. Went out with whatever papers I had. Went out, did my thing, sold everything. I said, man, pray to Allah, okay. All right, so it was like a day-to-day -day thing where I had to keep going back and forth to this. And then I was, I don't remember what I was traveling for, but I went to Chicago and went to the Respect for Life bookstore. And this time that I went, they had just found a box of Study Guide 19 in storage that they put out. And it was like, and I was like, how much are these? They were like, oh, brother, those are saviors they give us. We're not selling those. We're giving those away. He said, take as many as you need. I said, for real? I was like, you're playing, brother. He's like, no, sir, I'm serious. So I grabbed some. I had never read Study Guide 19 before. Never. And so once I got home, like literally that whole week, I was deep into study in Study Guide 19, still trying to grasp on the understanding. And, and I sat with the brother, Brother Patrick. He said, oh, you need to read Sister Ava's book on real love and we talking about this B and it is in that substance and faith. And so we dig it in this piece. And after that time, it was really like a, a chrysalis or cocoon phase for me because after that time, I ended up moving back. Um, I built up the courage to ask my dad, can I move back home? Cause he saw I wasn't, I wasn't eating. I was brother, I was eating, uh, I'll tell you what I, I was eating. Here and there, I had some good a good pot of bean soup, but I was eating canned beans, brother, the black beans from the from the gas station and, and saltine crackers, brother. That's how I was, that's how I was living. And then I would have some fruit from one of the brothers who was I was staying in the house with. He like, you gonna you gonna get out today and go sell this fruit, brother Darnell. <laughs> and so whatever I didn't sell, you know, I would just keep like that was my that was a part of my meal. And so my father, I would go home on Sundays and, you know, I was like, you know, I just wanted to see everybody. And he's like, nah, you ain't, you, you like, I can tell you ain't eating. I'm slow, skinny. <laughs> I lost all this weight. I'm, I'm basically fasting and praying up in this mug. And, and he's like, you know, whenever you ready, son, you know, you can, of course you can move back. I'm like, why would I tell you? Like I just, you know, I was, you know, pride. My pride wasn't gonna allow me to, to, to like, yeah, I need to move back there. No. And so once I did that, I had, that solidified my understanding. That grew me. But those two, that fear, faith, and truth, and that study guide 19 and 19B, 19 um, the, the knowledge of God and the keys to the kingdom. Oh, Allah, I'm telling you, that made me. And so when I see it, when we go and read it in the, our FOI curriculum, I, I get so excited. And I tell the brother, I said, brother, this is my life, brother. This, this gives me life for my Islam. And so if you see me get hyped when I'm reading it, it's because <laughs> this was saved. But this, the, the words of the Arab Minister Louis Farrakhan literally saved my Islamic life. And so that's what caused me to readjust my trajectory in Islam and really go full in. And it was later that year, uh, November 06, when I um, recited and got registered. And at the, it was funny because I was just going to, my father thought I was just going to the orientation class with him just to be there. But mm -hmm. all the assignments he would give, I'm like, okay, let me go. I'm gonna go and study this. Bam, bam, let me go read that. And the day that I recited, the the um, lieutenant brought me into the office. He was like, we got a new FOI. <laughs> and my dad was like, huh? He was like, man, I didn't even know y'all said all praises due to Allah. And that was right before Savior's Day 2007, which was in Detroit. And so that was that little cluster of time that helped me to fix my mind on this is what I want. This is what I want um, as, as far as this walk is concerned. And then from, from that time, from that time, <laughs> and it's been, of course, trial after trial to test whether or not what the experience that I had just went through was real. 
but that has that experience forever has has held me has been the glue which has held me together in my islam and forcing me to to study the god in that way praise be to allah i'm glad that you had the experience my sister miriam says something like him but demarcus uh, eli uh, some like uh, brothers uh sister miriam says i'm like him cousin camilla so like brother joseph or brother yusef okay excellent now let's go back to the divorce situation mm -hmm. um a lot of children we always hear from most of the time we hear from the parents but we don't hear from the children of the divorce situation how did it impact um you and your other siblings how you are able to recover because you all seem like such a close family i would never know that y'all had any issues brother so I, that was probably one of the most trying times this all happened at the same time um and you know me thinking as an adult you know i'm 21 you know 19 21 i'm like you know well, i'm cool you know they ain't gonna affect me yeah right <laughs> we don't understand like that had to, had a great impact and at the time i felt like everybody else knew about it. And I was being like, all right, just don't tell Jalil because, <laughs> and maybe I was just oblivious to some of the realities at the time, but I felt like, I'm like, what's going on? Like everybody would start being weird around me. Like, I'm like, what's up? And so, <laughs> you know, I found my safe haven in uh, two brothers in particular who I um, went to middle school with. And they're now registered FOI. But we, I met them. Yes, sir. All praise is due to a lot because those two brothers, <laughs> after I left MUI, um, those were the, some of the first people that I met. I went to a African center school called Malcolm X Academy in, the, in Detroit. And at the time when I went, the, the principal of the school, he loved the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and he was very stern on the principals of uh, of uh, uh, black uh, excellence and all of that which Malcolm X taught. He was very stern and he tried to get it to be an all boys school, but the state did not allow that to be a reality. Mm -hmm. They fought to try to get that school closed down um, heavily. And so that was the next uh, step in where I went. Um, Dr. Uh, Cliff Watson, what's his name? Very serious. He did. He, if you saw him smile, that was a blessing because he did not play no games. And so that was a, so leaving MUI was an experience because this is my first time, you know, being in the classroom with the opposite sex. Like MUI, we was just all the brothers. And then yeah. <laughs> you got the yeah. sisters sitting in front of you like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a different experience, yeah. but those two brothers, I got, I was able to just, rock with them and you know we was doing we we found just peace and making music all of that we just hang out and but i didn't realize that how much it was going to affect me because again i'm thinking like you know i'm grown whatever i can handle it you know whatever they decide but no bro that was like it was very like an eerie point because you know you would hear something over here something over here and I was just, I was at a point where I'm like, I don't know. And so that was uh, part of what attributed to me like, okay, let me just go and be in my own space. And it affected everybody differently. And I remember um, specifically brother, student minister, brother Rasul, he had called me and my brother Ibrahim into the office. And he asked us like, you know, whose side? are you all alone? <laughs> and, he, and we was like, huh? It was like a weird, <laughs> and he was like, he was like, I know he was like, it seemed like they're your parents, but you naturally going to pick one who, whoever you kind of cater to. And he was like, I don't, you don't have to tell me. That's just something that you think about. He said, but he, he shared, he shared with this, it's the movie in the movie Road to Perdition. At the end of the movie, the young boy is narrating the story and he says you know he's saying all of these things he said when people ask me you know about who he was he said all i know is that he was my father that's all i know he was my father and he said that's what most important 
that that's your father and that's your mother. And so it had a great effect. At that time, um, a lot of my, all of my siblings, all but myself, had pulled out the away. They weren't at the mosque. Mm -hmm. And so I caught the brunt of people and they the real of them came out now. And so you have people saying, you know, how's your mom or how's your dad? And I would say, you know, my parents are fine. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're good. And so that would tell me, you know, where your mind would linger either way. So you heard something from this side, you heard something from that side. And so I would just tell them, you know, my oh, my parents, oh, they're doing excellent. My parents are doing well. Mm, mm. Praise be to Allah, you know. And, and, then, and then at a certain point, it was those who I knew were spewing, um, just spewing, you know, you just, um, slack talk and gossip and i'm looking at you in your face and i still got to have to hold my islam and say you know yes sir you know and then you know they smiling and x y and z i i, I can remember um brother rasul was very um he he always wanted to be able to um deal with those situations in a way that would be dialogue and so we had a circle uh, one night. It was just the brothers. I won't go into the details of what, but at a, everybody was sharing whatever, 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 whatever. And it got to me. I was sitting right next to him. And I told, I said, I said, I know you all, many of you have had issues. You have issues with my, my father. I said, I know that. And I said, one of the things that you should know is that during his whole time as the minister, we as children now, he never came at home to tell us anything about what the believers did or the business of the believers. And he knew, but he never came and tell us with brothers X, Y, Z. What he would tell us is always show the believers respect and honor. He said, you see this food, son? We like, yes, sir. That's for the that's because of the believer. You see these lights on? You like, yes, sir. That's because of the believer. At that time, the student ministers were getting the charity that was help them sustain their family for their work in the mission. And so when it came around the Savior's Day time, you know how it went. <laughs> you know, we was giving that was bean soup for about four weeks straight. That was it. Yeah, Wasn't no specialty yeah. meal. You was straight up bean soup, maybe some farina bread, some, but you know, but those, that time, you know, having to navigate through snakes, bro. <laughs> and then, and keep and maintain what Allah put in me from my father to tell us, we don't disrespect the believer. We don't ever do that because, and, 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 I, and so I told him, I said, I know you all have issues with my father. No, I'm, I'm sure of it. And I said, you know, whatever issue that you may have had with him, he's not here no more. But right now, I said, but you can, you can, you can, you have to deal with me now. I said, because I'd be damned if I let any of you run me out of my mosque. <laughs> so all praise is good to lie. So I just, you know, I'm like, not me. I said, you know, you can go and do whatever. I said, but when you come back, trust and believe, Brother Jalil will be right at the door to greet you when you come in the mosque. <laughs> And many of them, it was funny to see that that actually happened and come full circle and you open up the door and I'm a lake them soldier. <laughs> you know, you gotta agree some of these same brothers. You gotta check them. And you know, all of that is a a real reality um, of what that and so I'm sure each of my siblings have a different aspect of the story, but I didn't if I would have took more of an account of the effect that it was going to have on me at that time, because you think, you know, I'm an adult now and I'm, just, I'm cool. <laughs> no, sir, brother. <laughs> These things that those are the kind of things that many don't recover from. It shakes the foundation so deeply that they never come in and then they build a, a uh, resentment toward Islam altogether. And so I thank a lot that that did not that was not the case for me, that that time that Allah took with me at that point, it fortified me for what was to come after that. And so 
I, I'm I'm forever grateful. But it was a, it was tough. It was tough for sure. It was tough. Me too, a lot. And I gotta thank you and your family again for you all sacrifice, and may Allah uh, protect you all and heal you all as y'all move forward, man. Because the, the just to be a believer, period. But especially the children, yes, sir. children of laborers, may Allah bless y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brother. Man, I bless you, man. I bless you. Yes, sir. Uh, my, my cousin Camilla says that's right. Brother Jason Muhammad says a lot in the person of uh, Dawood Muhammad saved my life. He loved him and his entire family. Sister, uh, me, my sister Mimi says all praises to Allah. Take strength. Much respect to you and your family. Okay. My next, my next question is, what was it like for you meeting? Uh, well, you met, you know, you've been around the nation your whole life, of course, the minister. But what's the yeah. most um, special time that you were around the most harmless as far as the most special time you know as being of course being the children of labor anytime he would come to the city there would be that opportunity where you could say you know hey i'm like my minister hey 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 and then everybody like all right all right we're moving let's move out the way we got to get the minister out of here <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. we know that all too well and so but i think the most significant time for me was right after my parents that all, i mean this is all happening at the same time so this was like very impacting for me um um my um brother rasul was here and the minister came to i think they were going to see at that time the mayor uh kwame kilpatrick i think this was right at around the time that he had first um he was first incarcerated and um we were at the the um the townhouse where Brother Rasu stayed it was an apartment downtown, and it was a lot of commotion happening because there's this this Caucasian. He's there, walking around. It's prior to the minister's arrival. He's walking around. What's going on here? You know, where are you guys? Who are you? And he, you know, back and forth and all of that. And um, it gets to a point where he's there, and um, when the, the the minister's coming around the corner, he's there, and my brother, he's kind of like nubs him off into the corner because he's like, minutes are coming. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to move, sir. <laughs> and so they get the minister that was ready. He goes up and the brother, uh, Captain Majid, I thank Allah for him. And and his first officer at that time, who who um, was my second captain, Brother Carlin Muhammad, mm. um, he was like, is anybody upstairs? on the door and the brothers was kind of looking like you know i don't know if i should go up there and he was like well jalu you go up i said yes sir so i go up and you know i'm just walking back and forth just it's a very small hallway the 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 room is right there off of the elevator and i'm just walking back and forth and maybe an hour maybe two passed they were eating dinner and they coming out now Supreme Captain comes out. I'm like, he was, he kind of like was, um, he was like motioning me to like turn around. And when the minister comes out, you know, I, this is my first time. So I'm like, I'm like, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, Wa alaikum salam, son. He put his hand out. And I shook his hand and he pulled me in. Mm. And he gave me a hug. And he said, um, he squoze me and he said, How's mom and dad? I said, they're doing fine. I, and I kind of just like, you know, just kind of let's like drop in him. And he said, he said, please give him the green. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't know he knew who I was. So we get into going to the elevator, and Brother Rasul comes out and he's like, um, Brother Minister, you know that's. And he kind of did like this. He's like, I know. <laughs> and so that was probably the most um, uh, pivotal um, meeting that I had. That was number one, uh, seeing the minister and getting to um, just experience him and know that he knew who I was. And so when I, you know, I told my father and then he talked to the minister and he said, you know, my son was so excited to, to meet you. And he said, the minister said, no, I was excited to meet him. And he said, I love it when the children of the believers love to do the work. And I said, man, all praises due to Allah. 
<laughs> and then 2007, Savior's Day, I was just was my first time working with the youth committee and we trying to work and we that year, if you remember, we were doing the souvenir journals to raise the Savior's mm -hmm. Day gift for the album. Mm -hmm. So they like the top sellers are going to have an opportunity the top sellers are going to have the opportunity to meet the minister and present him with the check. And I'm like, cool. I mean, so me and another brother, we working, we try to sell as many as we could. We like, give us, give us all of them. And so we did that and we didn't think nothing about it. You know, we said, well, you know, I told brother, you know, we did our best, you know, a lot of whack by whatever it is going to go to the Mr. Farcon. Savior's Day weekend is done. It's Monday, you know, the month that Monday. And I get a call from Sister Cabasa that morning. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, ma'am, you know, she's like, um, are you staying downtown the hotel? I'm like, no, I'm home right now. And she's like, well, uh, you need to get here because we're getting ready to go and see the album Mr. Lewis Farrakhan. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> so I gotta get on the bus to get down there. So I'm getting dressed, ah, I'm running to the bus stop. And the bus comes immediately, but it's driving super slow. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna miss it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss seeing the album Miss Louis Fire. This bus driver going slow. I mean, slow. He's taking his time at all the stops. I'm like, this is ridiculous. So you get to a point downtown where you can I could see the the, the rent stand. So I'm like, I'm about to run this mug. So I get out. I get out, run all the way to Ren Sand. I get into the motor lobby where you know we all kind of congregate. And I went upstairs. I'm like out of breath. <sighs> and Sister Kabasa like, uh, "Oh, good, you're here." She was like, "He's drilling up a meeting, so we got about another thirty minutes." <laughs> I said, "Pray be to Allah," because I sure thought I was about to miss it. And so we wait, and then we get, we finally get in there. And you know, this is right after the minister had his surgery, um, and did Savior's Day. And so, yes, sir, yes, sir. I wasn't expecting to see him at all. And so when we got to go in. She, um, when she, we come in, I was like, oh, it was three other sisters that, that were there. So I came in last and the minister got up. He was so, he was looking so strong. He said, I'm so happy to see you all. And he said, you know, he said, thank you. He looked at check. He said, I'm not praise be to Allah. And he said, he told us, he said, never be afraid to get down in the mud, to get your garments dirty, to go after our people. And I said, all praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> because the uh, man, only Allah could set these situations up because he know the fortification that I needed at that time to give me. And so it was like he was just putting the gas in the engine. <laughs> I said, Praise I'm like, Allah. okay, all praises due to Allah. Let's keep going then. So, <laughs> so those were probably the two most significant. And then recently, the minister, the call was made for the brothers to come and help on the farm mm. uh, in Michigan. And when we first started the, the teachings, when they did the Ask Firecon questions on Twitter, one of the questions that I asked is like, when can I come and help on the farm? Mm. And he said, at that time, you know, send your resume and we'll be able to have opportunity to help soon. Now, years later now, the call is made to come to the farm to help. And so the first day um, we get the call, many brothers show up to come. And there was a group of brothers who was like, well, they were confused on the time. Well, we got to get out of here. You know, we got to go back home and get to work. And I'm like, okay, you know, you know, you know, whatever y'all want to do, I'm not leaving until they tell us to leave. <laughs> and so the um, brother, brother Emil had come and he was just saying the minister really wants, he wants to see you all. Um, he said he may come out on the cart just to come and give you all the greetings. And we were like, okay, cool. Yes, sir. And we continue working. And he came back <laughs> out and said, the minister wants to see you all, but he wants you all to come to the main house. And we like, praise be to Allah. <laughs> so the, the, the um, we go to the main house and we're standing outside and getting ready for the minister to come out. Right before he comes out, I'm just, you know, I'm super nervous because this is, this is, this, this was this year. And so we hadn't seen or heard from the minister at this point for mm -hmm. some time. And so we like, we get the opportunity to see him. We get to hear from him. Nobody else gets to hear from the minister. And so 
I'm geek, you know, I'm nervous. I'm like, you know, uh, and one of the brothers, brother Elijah from Grand Rapids, he looked, he said, he said, bro, D.I., we gonna give him a salute? And I wasn't, I literally wasn't thinking at that time. It took me a minute. <laughs> It took me a minute to even respond to him because I wasn't thinking about it. And then I said, I said, oh, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. And <laughs> the minister, he comes out. He was um, he was holding. He came out with his cane. And I said, fruit tans, huh? oh, was an old salute. And he literally, I'm telling you, brother, he let the cane go and he stood up at attention and he brought his salute up real slow. And he said, and he said, and I said, ready front. He said, you soldiers can go to that ease. And, but from that point, I just started crying. Literally, I was crying the whole time, the minister yeah. talking. And he's telling us, he said, you all are, you all heard the call and you, and you, and you listened to the call. He said, that was makes you a true believer. And he said, you know, he was just making us over. And he was like, you know, I wish I could give you some more. He said, he even said, I wish I could give you all like five, uh, at least five gallons worth of gas. And so we like, brother minister, no sale, but you just showing you the heart of him. He said, you know, we don't have much, but you know, we want to give you a bag of beans. And we like, I'm crying, brother, because we like these, these the, the, the powerful beans from there. And so we, and so that was a very, and and I was able to go, you know, four, four times after that. But the both the times that I went, the first time and the last time we went, we I was able to see him directly you know um and those were very uh especially in, in this hour those were very uh pivotal points for me to see and hear from him uh you know it's nothing it's nothing compares to that experience to get that charge directly from the messiah brother that's it's bar none and no experience that can match that really, you know, <laughs> but those are some very uh, beautiful exchanges. And so those are probably some of the most significant um, encounters that I've had with the man of the man of God in the Amo Praise be to Allah. Brother, Brother Jalil, what do you do for fun? Fun? I love telling jokes, bro. I, 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 I love <laughs> comedy. I love like, you know, like even just coming up with like goofy, um, like drill drill cadences, just to be funny because you know only like only DIs understand. We just be making, <laughs> <laughs> we just be making up stuff just because we in the nation and it just it just sound funny. But um, yeah, like video games, I love it. I mean, okay, um, okay. Are you PlayStation, Park? PlayStation, PlayStation, or more uh, Xbox? It's big, man, being poor, bro, whatever I can get first. <laughs> Whichever one I get my hands on first is the one I like best. So is it, I get that one, I'll be talking it up because like, yeah, this is the one I got. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I like that, the, the Nintendo Switch, you know, mm. that was, uh, but um, I haven't done any of the new, the, the next gen stuff, but you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a gamer per se in that way. But I know I can I can do I can hold my own. You know, me and my brother played the video game again, me and Ibrahim recently. <laughs> and it was like we were little children again, because he started getting mad when I <laughs> when I, <started> when I, <laughs> I said, all right, here you go. We back to being just like when we was little. He ready to unplug the game. <laughs> uh, but but speaking of that, my my brother once it's like once you have children or you get married or something, something like a switch goes off or some. And for mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't experience that, but like I can't. My brother used to play video games with me all the time. Now he he's mature, you know, he don't play games no more. <laughs> what is what is it about being a father or being a husband is for some that just make you be like, it's over, no more games, and you'll be serious all the time. I think it's I think it's the ability to make the adjustment. I th because I think those are the things that really make you um ties you closer to your children, that you don't just become big grow up adult that they can't relate to now. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the things that my children that I like I like playing, you know, being goofy with my children because that ties me to them in a way that many want to turn on the switch like I have to be serious, you know, I'm so robotic. <laughs> it's not that ain't necessary. It requires a certain level of finesse. Yes, you want to be the figure of authority in your house, for sure. But you have we have to understand that we're not just raising just random children. These gods, man. 
and they're going to challenge your intellect on every level. Man, my son would tell me, <laughs> you know, you be thinking you the authority. You're going to do that. Ah. And they'll be like, my youngest son would be like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> and you got to like, okay, well, now I got to readjust my plan because, you know, you know, and then, or they'll tell you when you wrong, when you was wrong, when you said, and then you be like, damn, are you right? <laughs> I did mess up. You, you right about that. And you find yourself, you know, retracing and, and adjusting, making adjustments to what you said, like, well, well, you're right. Okay. I guess I did. I did make that up. I, I gotta, you know, you were right. I submit, you know, I submit. And so I think it's just being able to make that adjustment because that's one of the ways that um, me and my son connect. I get into his interest and he's like, oh, oh, daddy like games too, you know? Yeah. Oh, and so like recently, my son has like been very fixed on like learning about birds. He loves all animals and creatures, but he's like, he knows about birds. And I said, I said, interesting because I used to be very deep into birds when I was little. Like so much so that my mom bought me a bird watching book, like a handbook for Savior's Day one year. And so I'm like, so it's, he got it honest because he just, he gets fixed on these uh, aspects of learning about the creation of Allah in the, in the creatures. And so, um, but I just making that adjustment. I think that's the biggest thing. We, we think that we have to be a certain way when you really don't. And you study the minister and how he deals. He's very much um, has a youthful take on his expression and his interaction. And when you hear stories of people uh, of that people tell of him, he, 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 he's, he's like a child because he's always soaking up information. He's soaking up information. He wants to learn. He's like, wow, you do that? And he's not, and he's not being funny about, he's not trying to like make you feel good by doing that. Yeah, yeah, he he like, genuinely wants to know about these things that he doesn't really give the time and focus to. And if you excel in that area, he wants to know. And brother um, Imam Sultan, he, every time he comes, he always shares something of what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was like in those personal settings. And he was like, you know, when children would come to the house, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would get on his hands and knees and be on the floor playing with the children. And you like, what? The messenger of Allah? Yes. <laughs> yes, the messenger of Allah was on the floor playing with children. And when he came, when the Imam came to, um, he did, he was doing um, Islamic sciences and he came to talk to the students, he did just that. And they immediately, he got on his, he was sitting on the floor with the students and they immediately were all in. It did not remove him from, you know, setting the tone of the class. Well, no, you know, we're not gonna disrespect each other. We can still have some fun, but we ain't gonna be on that level. <laughs> but just those aspects, I think it's just, having that understanding. And sometimes even in the midst of it, you forget that, you know, they're human beings and there's a certain way that they like to be, and you want to get a certain result from dealing with them in a certain way. But I think it's just that switch that, and, and, and that's one of the things, the unique element about our family, like we love joking and playing and laughing. So we keep that energy, um, among us when we anytime we're together like it's always an opportunity to, to crack some jokes because like <laughs> like and so i was telling people like that's how when i was in high school like i was clowning like you could you could do your you could try but this is what i was born doing like i got nine siblings that went in on me all day so you could go there if you want to if that's what you want to do but i'm just be ready and waiting <laughs> and wait for the opportunity <laughs> to deal with you so i think as as fathers, we 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 build ourselves a um, a cage because we think because we saw it from our fathers or other men who we believe as and not to say that they weren't strong characters that we have to be that way and that's not that's not necessarily true. We have to be able to um, adapt to the situation and know that. We wanted to. We wanted to be treated a certain way, but that just wasn't. <laughs> that just wasn't what we got. <laughs> so we have to keep that in mind yeah. with our children, with our um, our nieces and nephews. We have that opportunity to 
to uh, be of that influence on them without having to be the, you know, you know, good cop, bad cop, you know, you don't have, that is not necessary. Yes, at certain points you have to be a little stern and firm, but you don't ever have to be, oh, I don't play such video games anymore. Like, no, like, you know, get out the sticks, bro. Like you just mad cause you about to lose. Like you don't want to play that mad no more. <laughs> and so I think, and the other time is just time. We don't make time for it. And so, you know, we would like, oh, I got to go to work. I got to do this. And sometimes it may just call for you to just be still, you know? And that's what this time has really showed us like, a lot of that stuff don't even mean the what the, the the level of importance that we give to a lot of it. It don't even mean nothing because when a lot shut it all down, all you got is the people that's right in the room with you, and so yes, you got to be yes, able sir. to survive right there with them on those aspects of real life <laughs> and not fantasy. So, uh, part of the quarantine, we had time playing a game of, of the, a whole half of the day. Me, my son, my daughter. My wife, we was playing Soul Calibur. And so we passed it like, you know, pass, <laughs> like you so lost. <laughs> pass the sticks you like. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I invested money because we needed those times to just, just as a release, just to, just to, just all of the thoughts that come in your brain, just being a believer, you seeing everything that's happening. Like you just need a release from it at certain points. And like, well, I just need to play the game. I need to shoot something on this game. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, just, I, just, I ain't going to the range i ain't trying to take my anger out on nobody else but these dudes they about to get it you know <laughs> and so first, just, like we gotta first. we just have to be able to uh live life in that fullest and that's really what our islam is really in the fullest sense is living life with with in keeping in mind that we still in our in us living our life we still got to be saviors we can be saviors by not you know being in the rigid uh format because we haven't been able to do it mm. not in this way you don't have the moss to say this is the place where we must go sunday yeah. wednesday friday you don't have that now and so we we're learning how to be muslims without somebody else peeking over to see if you're being a muslim <laughs> <laughs> so I thank Allah. It's really been a blessing. All praises due to Allah for the benefits that we've gained. Yes, we've taken some losses and some hurtful losses too. But the benefits that we've gained, Allah is really showing us what our nation of Islam, we have to prepare for because it's something bigger coming. He's preparing us for that. And this is just that's the, as Brother Ishmael said, this is the lull. So you better enjoy the lull because the storm is damn sure coming. And yeah, so yeah, we yeah. gotta take the winds where we can get them. But I think that's just a big part of um, growing out of that ego as men and just really uh, tapping into um, the spirit of, 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 of a child. And, and why are they the way that, that way? Because they don't have all of these stressors that we put on them. You gotta worry about, you gotta pay the bills, you gotta pay the, you gotta pay the <laughs> <laughs> you damn, you making them into a dart at three. <laughs> and they just want to be. Just let me dance and let me run around. Uh, yes. And so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a big part of it. So that's a struggle. It's a back and forth thing. You won't, you don't just like get it. Aha, I got it. Um, but I think it's something that we have to just consider and keep in mind um, when we, as we raise children and, or just being a, a good uncle because it's, it's going to be those times where, you know, our our siblings make a choice, and that that man may not be around. And now you have to be a good a good uncle, a, a uncle father, and they look to you to be a certain way. And it ain't gonna always just be play, but you should they should know that okay, he can he does know how to have fun. I want to go back over to Uncle Jai house, you know. <laughs> Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. So that's that's one of the things that I've learned and am still learning and just being father, uncle, big brother, um, and just those aspects of, of life, really, of life. Praise be to a lot. Well, I've learned a lot about you. We've learned a lot from you today. My sister Naima says a new reality, teach, and uh, Mimi was asking, my sister Mary was asking us, can, can my cousin come up? So well, my sister Mimi was asking us about about some of your jokes with drill cadence. She said she wanted to hear an example. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but even but even in that, my sisters, um, they know your sisters through memes, through mm -hmm. Facebook. Like we all connect in another mm -hmm. way. 
we just have to see when we get in um in person there's no excuse for us not having no pictures together as families right right we we, we right. have the, we have we have some very similar realities and we should be mm -hmm. closer so uh man i don't even think I, i've never seen my dad and your dad take pictures you know we got to do better right, here. Right. <laughs> we, we have, the next generation we got to take pictures right and introduce, and introduce your children to my yes. niece and nephew we we want family we all we got mm -hmm. uh let's stay on cold so um man i want to thank you Raj. i learned a lot from you Man, I, every, time I see, every, every time I see you just on post or you know, drill right, we working, bro. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. May um may Allah bless you and your family, man. Um, Detroit, you know, Mecca. So y'all gotta y'all gotta hold it. No pressure, but y'all gotta hold it down. <laughs> no pressure, though. No pressure. Yes, sir. And I want to thank you for taking time out of your um your busy schedule to come on the people's podcast. I'm gonna put it on YouTube. Please like, share, and subscribe, everybody who's watching. And um, give the greetings to your parents, your father. I I, I'm will. Not, I'm Whenever you want to have me back on, I'm available. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. And your I'll siblings. Make, make the time. Yes, sir. Praise be to all. Give the greetings to all your family and tell your children. Uh, Soul Calibur is one of my favorite games. Well, it used to be one of my favorite games. <laughs> right. Soul Calibur. Yeah, man. Yes, sir. So, well, extend the, you, sir. the greetings to your family. I, I just, lastly, I'll just say thank you uh, for all that you do. And uh, as I told you before, upholding that the our tradition of our oral history because right, you know we'll look at it 10 years from now and yeah he interviewed so and so you know the america has their greats you know they take couples and uh larry kings and we yeah, have yeah. to be able to lift up ours that can say oh they interviewed such and such and so and so when yeah, the yeah. when the history is written we'll be able to say we've upheld uh the banner of islam in the way that allah put on us to do and so you know of course i thank a lot for for you and your family and and our brother Stu minister sharif and our sister sister sharifa who had a great impact on our family and the class and the nation of islam those are people you don't you don't forget you don't forget them <laughs> and so they they hold true and the blessing is that we are who we are because of them um, and the sacrifice that they made. So I thank Allah for being able to know and not just know you from seeing you, but we worked and we've trained together, bro. That's and that's we it. got to get up at them 5 a.m. training. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm familiar. And so it's a great honor and privilege and blessing to just be in the walk with my brother, man. And not just my brother because he in the nation, but a real one that that don't, you don't ever just like, hey, brother, I'm going to make him see you at Savior's Day. But, yes, you sir. know, <laughs> always went out of the way to say you know this and i love you brother i always appreciate you and i and that's one of the things that we've always been able to buy i could hit you and uh, this is what's up you know yeah. you know anything about this sure. you know just Thank on those awesome. levels that we've always had that rapport and so again it speaks to just growing up growing up in a nation man and we and uh, understanding those dynamics so I, i'm thankful Thanks, to a lot to to be in this in the same sphere brother and that we can see and hear from each other. Beautiful way. As you all can tell, who don't know, uh, Brother Jalil would definitely be in some form of ministry in the future because you know what I'm saying? He, he, he got the book. I'm just saying, like, you know, like, right? See, everybody else serious, Jalil, but I'm like, this man about to drop some teachers on us or something. So you already know what it is. So I know your dad, I know your, I know your father's proud, your mom's proud, your siblings, your wife, and children. And I'm proud, bro. And I root for y'all. Uh, hope y'all practice. Drill, bro, because when you come back, Detroit, we counting y'all to get a winner here now. Yeah, come right. come I'm, on I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thankful, and I say thank you for keeping the brotherhood in drill. Because again, like I told you before, it inspired me to pick up the mantle of DI to say we got to drill. And I told the soldiers, I said, brother, I'm gonna drill until a lot take me down, brother. You, I'm, <laughs> you got, you have to stop me from drilling. And so we working in and. and we are we are preparing all quarantine. I told the brother, I saw all I've been thinking about. I've been drilling every day. Brothers like yeah, I can yeah, still yeah, beat you. Yeah, yeah, I said, no, brother, yeah. that's not gonna happen. So <laughs> you're not gonna beat me in elimination. I'm sorry, brother. I know I know <laughs> I know it sounds good. <laughs> but yes, sir, that's that's my my heart is in drill. And while as long as my body will allow, brother, I'll be drilling. <laughs> to, right, so. You know, and 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 preparing the next wave of soldiers. With the desire, because that is our—that is a greatest part of our, uh, one of the greatest parts of our culture, is drill, 
and, and yes, deriving that discipline and oneness to be able to prepare ourselves to receive that from a lot. So, yes, sir. I love it. I love it. That drill life. <laughs> Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, love you, Brother Jalil. Love your yes, family. Sir, love you too. And thank you all for watching the People's Podcast. Stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum